And, dude, you mentioned whenever you move me, I asked you once, and I'm gonna tell you again, I don't wanna go any place it's cold. You really don't have a choice in that matter. Ed, come on. Just whoever fucking controls it, just no place cold, all right? Do that for me. I'm trying to undo it. He's bronchial, and, you know, that's why. Well, just... if he's legitimately bronchial, we'll take that I'm into consideration. bronchial, would you like to go someplace that's not cold? Okay, can, I, can I ask you some questions here? What about my parents? What about them? Am I going to see them? Am I going to talk to them? I mean, don't I have some kind of contact with them? No. No. Look, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that God forbid something happens to my parents and they get sick, I can't go and see them? Maybe something could be worked out. If they're sick, if there's some extraordinary set of circumstances, maybe something could be worked this. out. I can't do this. I can't do this, Henry. I can't. I can't leave my parents. Excuse me, Karen. I told you before, if you, I, I'm not going to do this unless you and the kids come with me. I, I can't do it without you, okay? So you do whatever, but that's it. You need Henry. You don't need me, right? That's right. And frankly, I don't care whether you go or not. If it's going to make him a happier witness, a better witness, I'd like you to be with him. They want Henry. They don't want me. But Henry's going to be in a witness protection program. They're not going to be able to get to him. The only way they can get to him is by getting to you, getting to your kids. If he goes into the program, forget about it. You're in a great deal of danger. I think you I understand I don't know anything. That. Come on, you don't know anything. Don't give me the babe in a woods routine, Karen. I've listened to those wiretaps, and I've heard you on a telephone. You're talking about cocaine. Conversation after conversation, you're talking to Henry on the phone. <laughs> doesn't matter because whether he goes to jail or whether he stays on the street and he beats the case he's a dead man he knows it and you know it what about the kids with school I think what they get left them? back i mean what goes on a bunch of guys went on the wall street and did some real fucking crooks whoever sold you those suits had a wonderful sense of humor what it comes down to karen is we're basically your only salvation we're going to save your life we're going to save his life and we're going to keep you out of jail Mr. Hill, this morning you told the members of this jury about your background. It was easy for all of us to disappear. My house was in my mother-in-law's name. My cars were registered to my wife. My social security cards and driver's licenses were phonies. I never voted. I never paid taxes. My birth certificate and my arrest sheet. That's all you'd ever have to know I was alive. see him here in the courtroom today? Yes. Could you please point him out to the members of the jury? Your Honor, please let the record reflect that Mr. Hill has identified the defendant, James Conway. Mr. Hill, do you also know a man by the name of Paul Cicero? Yes. Do you see him here in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you point him out for the members of the jury? Your Honor, let the record reflect that Mr. Hill has identified the defendant, Paul Cicero. Your Honor, I have a document that I'd like to have marked. See, the hardest thing for me was leaving the life. I still love the life. And we were treated like movie stars with muscle. We had it all just for the asking. Our wives, mothers, kids, everybody rode along. I had paper bags filled with jewelry stashed in the kitchen. I had a sugar bowl full of coke next to the bed. People call them rats because a rat will do anything to survive. Isn't that right, Mr. Hill? Objection. Objection, sister. Uh, look, I don't know nothing about being a rat. Mr. Hill, you know everything about being a rat. Objection, Your Honor. In view of the violence... Anything I wanted was a phone call away. Free cars, the keys to a dozen hideout flats all over the city. I'd bet 20, 30 grand over a weekend, and then I'd either blow the winnings in a week or go to the Sharks to pay back the bookies. Didn't matter. Didn't mean anything. When I was broke, I would go out and rob some more. We ran everything. We paid off cops, we paid off lawyers, we paid off judges. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. And now it's all over. 